Welcome to the Observers Direct, the show in which we go meet our observers in person and look into a problem in their community. This week we go to see Svetlana Barsukova, who lives in the beautiful city of St. Petersburg, Russia. Now, Svetlana is a lesbian. Gay people have long faced suspicion and harassment in Russia. And now a new law outlawing so-called homosexual propaganda, whatever that is, makes it even scarier to be gay in Russia. My colleague Julien Pain went to see just how bad things are. Hi, welcome. These are our offices where we put the festival together. So, Svetlana, why did you want us to, to come here? I wanted people to know how the LGBT community is treated in Russia and in St. Petersburg in particular. More often than not, our problems are overlooked. There are acts of violence, but the authorities turn a blind eye. People are murdered, beaten up. There's a great deal of violence, but it's swept under the carpet, so people aren't aware of it. The attacks are a direct result of the new laws in force because the people committing these acts of violence believe they have the government's blessing. And right now you're organizing a queer fest, correct? It's the fifth edition and we're very happy to be able to organize it. We were afraid we wouldn't be able to hold it this year because of the new law. The festival usually takes place in the city center, but this year we're holding it on the outskirts. I think this way we'll be able to avoid any trouble. We've had two exhibitions here. The curator's with us today. I'll introduce you to her. She can tell you more. Hello. Bonjour. Hello. So you're in charge of this exhibition? Yes, that's right. Tell me about the photos on the wall. The exhibition looks at the history of the LGBT community in Russia, a Soviet Russia, a modern Russia. The church tells us we must be introverted, we must be feminine, and it's not important to educate children. And masculinity is now being stigmatized. The modern woman is a submissive woman. Something like that, yes. The festival begins and a crowd starts to gather. Several European diplomats have come to show support, but suddenly the atmosphere changes. Svetlana learns that local parliament member Vitaly Milanov is downstairs. That's Milanov over there, right? The lawmaker who passed the homophobic law. That's him, right? I'm going to go and talk to him. Mr. Milanov? Hello? Hello, good, mo good evening. I'm Julian. I'm a journalist from France 24, France 24. I'm a journalist. Would you agree to talk to me for a second? Can I ask you what you're doing here? It smells worse here. It smells worse? Yes. What do you mean it smells worse? Uh, we are looking how uh, for uh, European countries officials support those who, uh, who rape kids. But those uh, support sodomies. I think it would be nice for uh, Dutch people to know that the, the representative of the Dutch government is supporting those who are against Christians. He fights Christian Christian uh, church. There's so much violence going on against oh, no, gay it's, people it's now. Fake. It's a fake information. Well, it's on. It's everywhere on the internet. People get oh, kidnapped, no, no, beaten no, no. up. Oh, oh, it's 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 a foolish story. No, it's not not true. It's so you're not true. saying that there's no it's violence against gay. It's not true. I think that much more violence goes from gay people, people to straight people. 
much more violence. As a French representative, why did you be... Uh, I'm not a representative uh, of France, I'm a journalist. ...peaceful citizens on the street because they were protesting against same-sex marriages. You mean they in France? Protesting. Yes, in France. In France they beat hotly. They, they treat with the gas like uh, Syria rebels. A peaceful demonstration was hardly beaten by French SS police. SS police? Yes, because the Hollande, Hollande is fighting Christian values. The deputy is angry and calls the police to try and get the festival closed down. But the queer fest is not breaking any laws and is allowed to continue. According to official statistics, over 80% of Russians back the law introduced by Milanov banning homosexual propaganda. We head to the streets of St. Petersburg to see if this is true. Are you aware of the law that bans homosexual propaganda? What do you think about it? I totally agree. I don't like these people. I don't understand why they do what they do. It's bad. It's not moral. Birth rates are plummeting in Russia and all over Europe. Is that what you want? Childless, same-sex couples? I absolutely support the law. The Bible tells us that sodomy is a cardinal sin. Out of all the people we spoke to, only two showed some tolerance towards homosexuals. <laughs> I don't care. What do you think? It's up to them. People should be able to live their lives as they see fit. It's none of my business. Most people in Russia want homosexuals to live in secret, so they mingle in private venues, like the Malevich Club. Um, this, uh, this is the Malevich. Both women and men come here. They have fantastic shows. Let me show you around. Our observer introduces us to the owner. It's the first bar of its kind in central St. Petersburg. Everyone is welcome here, gay or lesbian. You can express yourself freely and be yourself. It's not just about meeting someone. We then met a friend of Svetlana's. It's difficult being gay here and having to hide your sexuality. Very few people understand or try to understand. I was fired for being gay. I was the product manager for a design firm. I never hid my homosexuality, but I didn't want to talk about it. When they found out, they fired me. I dream of living in a place where I can hold hands in public with a man I love, to be able to kiss him and not be afraid. I just want to be happy. No more fear, no more secrecy. Russia's gay community lives in fear, fueled by vigilantes, like these young Russians who organize what they describe as stings to punish pedophiles. We were able to talk to their spokesperson. We use bait in the form of 14 and 15 year olds who visit online dating sites. They chat with people and trick them into meeting up. As the coordinator of the entire Occupy Pedophilia network, I make sure none of our regional branches do anything illegal. I don't endorse attacks against homosexuals. Our aim is to fight pedophilia, but I have to say that most of the pedophiles we catch are homosexuals. It's a finely tuned speech. The group's stance is that it doesn't target homosexuals, it targets paedophiles. But when they think we've stopped filming, they tell us about their interest in Nazism. Their homophobia and xenophobia become apparent. The ethnic criminal, this is a real problem of our city. I'm not a Christian, so I really dislike guys from Chechnya who destroyed my culture at the end of ages. <laughs> A quick look through the group's YouTube channel shows us that contrary to what they may claim, they can be extremely violent. They take the law into their own hands, and the authorities, it would seem, turn a blind eye. 
we go to meet St. Petersburg's Human Rights Commissioner to see if he is aware of the rampant homophobia there and if he's prepared to do anything about it. Uh, I think that the uh, problems of LGBT community uh, are not the main issues in my country, but uh, definitely they exist. If we see at the implementation of this law in the real life, uh, dozens of people had been uh, arrested for a short time uh, for uh, alleged by the, for the violation of this law. But in fact, when these cases came to the law, there were no court decisions. And that means that this law was badly worded and it cannot be implemented in the real life. We show him video footage of our encounter with Vitaly Milanov. Well, look at how uh, for, uh, European countries' officials support those who, uh, who rape kids, those who uh, support sodomies. I never heard such, uh, such kind of a speech. Uh, and I think that, is, uh, that deserves the special, the special investigation because uh, it's, it's unacceptable. They should react and uh, I think that uh, such cases will be investigated and in this case they will succeed. We report back to our observer and ask her if she's planning to follow the Human Rights Commissioner's advice and take legal action against Milanov. Absolutely, we're not going to let him get away with this. It's not the first time we've been on the receiving end of Milanov's hate speech. People must understand that this sort of talk is detrimental to society and can really harm people. We are, of course, going to follow Svitlana's progress and let you know what happens. You'll find more reports on our website. And remember, if you have a problem in your community, something you think the world needs to know about, get in touch. Maybe we'll come see you for the next Observer's Direct.